Good morning everyone, this is Ed Wilson, the Microsoft Scripting Guy, and today I want to talk a little bit about parsing an event trace log that was created with Windows PowerShell. Yesterday I talked a little bit about creating this log, and I mentioned that there's always steps that you're going to take. So those caps briefly are, well, I need to remove any existing network sessions and then create a new one. Uh, I need to specify a event provider, which is uh, almost always going to be Microsoft Windows TCP IP, and tie it to the specific session. Then I'm going to start that session. When I'm done, I'm done, I'm going to stop the session, and then I'm going to read that session uh, with uh, Get One Event. Now, so that's where I actually want to start. I want to start by using Get One Event, and I want to. Um, to store this information because I don't want to go back and have to try to read the uh, the event log over and over and over again and so I just store it in a variable dollar log and I say it's equal to this now once I do that it doesn't look a whole lot like a whole lot of anything but if I say dollar log and look at the count then I can see well this particular log was, was run very quickly and it has 178 events now how long did it actually take for me to do that. Well, in order, uh, or I want to know rather, uh, what is the time span uh, that is covered by this particular event log? Well, one of the ways that I can do that is to actually create a time span. And in the time span, what I want to do is I'm going to analyze the uh, time created property. And um, so we're going to look at the at the log and uh, see how long we got. So this particular log uh, runs for 51 seconds. Um, and uh, so uh, in this command, I've actually got it on my blog, but it's a new time span. I specify my ending date. I'm going to select the, uh, the last event and uh, get the time created. And uh, then I want to select the first event and uh, get the time created. And then I use that as my start point and end point. And when I do, it tells me that this particular log covers 51 seconds of time. Now, in, re in reality, unless I was looking for a very, very specific problem, I would probably have a log that would look uh, longer than that. So uh, what's in this this log? Well, I actually uh, don't know. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to just kind of peruse it and take a look and see. And a lot of times I can see that, you know, uh, just by kind of scrolling or looking at stuff that goes by, I can see that maybe there's an error or something. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You just can't really tell. Um, there, this uh, 1245 information event looks like it might actually be inter uh, interesting, or the 1246 uh, event. So uh, one of the things that I can do then is I can actually try to, um, to filter the log. And uh, to filter this log, then I can just say, uh, say dollar $log, and uh, then I can use the WHERE method. Uh, this was actually introduced in... Um, what is PowerShell 4, I believe. And it's a little squirrely, uh, but it's very powerful. And uh, so since it's a method, I have to have the uh, parentheses added on here. And then uh, the part that's a little squirrely is I have to specify a, um, a uh, script block inside there. So I always just kind of like type that stuff there like that. Um, I wish it would kind of pre-populate it, but it doesn't. So now I'm going to look for dollar underscore, and this is what really looks a little weird, is why are you doing dollar underscore when you're accessing a method directly off a collection? Well, because this is um, just a shortcut syntax, and we really would be piping this uh, down the pipeline, and so you're going to use the dollar underscore to represent the current item that's on the pipeline. So dollar underscore dot, uh, then I specify the ID, because it's the ID property that I was interested in, and um, since I know that it's going to be equal to something, then uh, what is it equal to? Well, uh, we said that we were uh, thought that maybe the, uh, what was it? Um, it was an RSS error right there, uh, 1346 or 1347, so, uh, 45 rather. So uh, 1345, and uh, press Enter. Uh, maybe it was 1346 then. 
and press enter. That's not picking up anything either. So was it 1345 or 46? I thought it was. Oh. 1245 and there was the 13 was down below so the neighbor there so 1245 1246 okay so maybe we'll get this right this time so um 1246 and uh there was an information there so now if we come uh then we can pipe this to format list uh with a star and format list is fl as an alias and so i press enter and then this gives me back so the rundown, uh, adapter 3, hash information, blah, 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 and maximum processors 2, uh, group affinity, active processor 0, um, receive hash. So, um, and the other one was uh, th uh, 1245, and uh, add that there, and um, then we can see this, and this says that uh, the interface 3, adapter 3, port 0, blah, blah, blah. So, this isn't as exciting as it, as it could be. So maybe what we want to look at is uh, this inspect one, 1003. And so the nice thing here is that after I've uh, got this kind of put over here, then it's just like a put this stuff over here. I don't want to look at all of that right now. Um, so uh, we can see that there's two here. Uh, two events and the message says that uh, the inspect connection pleaded connection successful um, I'll go on through there so by using this then I can uh, pretty easily uh, parse these uh, endpoints uh, or these particular messages now if I want to look at the message field itself maybe I just want to look for stuff that's uh, UDP um, so I can come back over here uh, clear the log um, where this is message, uh, and this time I don't want to say equal to, let's say match, and uh, then we can see that there's a number of uh, UDP messages that came back. So uh, by using Windows PowerShell in this way, I can quickly and easily uh, analyze the log. I can find information. So um, the larger the log, the more important this uh, technique becomes. So basically, what do I do? Well, I, um, I read the contents of the log uh, by using get one event. The file path came from my session variable where I had it. Uh, I always like to use um, count and time span so I have a, an idea as to which log, uh, what log I'm actually looking at and uh, what the values are. Then I can easily filter out by ID, uh, or I can use uh, regular express and match on the uh, message field itself. So it's a really powerful technique, can uh, help me um, find problems, analyze those problems, and get things going pretty quickly. So that's it. This is uh, Ed Wilson, and I'm the Microsoft Scripting Guy, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.